Hi guys, this is Will Wild back with another harmonica tutorial. In this video, I'm going to be talking about tone shaping. So, how to use your inbuilt tone control to shape your tone. So, this is something that I think often gets overlooked, or at least um, harp players, blues players especially, always talk about getting a, a fatter tone or a deeper, rounder tone. But I never hear people talk about how to get a brighter tone or to get more cut. And I often hear um, blues players complaining, um, you know, in, in forums and things that they go and play at, at jam sessions with a band and they can't hear themselves, uh, even if they're using a big amp. And I think this is something that has a lot to do with it. So I started to, to really think about this when I was at the, the spa convention in St. Louis a couple of years ago. Um, <laughs> someone came up to me and said, uh, said, I can always tell when it's you playing, even from down the hallway. If, if you've never been to spa, by the way, it's about 400 harmonica players all under one roof, just hanging out in this uh, hotel and jamming kind of 24-7. And this guy said he, he could always tell when it was me because I was louder than everybody else. And I, that's something I'd noticed as well, actually. I am very loud. And because of that, people assume that I must play really hard and be blowing out my harps all the time. And that's not the case at all. So let me show you why, why this is. Um, I was just discussing this with, with a student on Skype. Uh, we were talking about Sunny Terry. And Sonny Terry did this too. Um, so if we take a phrase like this. So, you know, someone like Sonny Boy Williamson, um, he would have played it tongue blocked, but he, he would approach it something like that. You know, James Cotton might have gone. But Sonny Terry would play that more like this. Okay. Now, can you see how much brighter that draw four is? So, as opposed to... Not only brighter, but much louder as well. So, what I'm doing there is I'm thinning out the sound a little bit, but I'm brightening the sound up. Basically, like... You know, if, if you think of a tone control on, on an amp, um, I'm adding brightness to the sound and placing it further forward towards the front of my mouth rather than at the back of the throat. So how I'm doing that is I'm just going to an E vowel, okay? And it's kind of the same with singing. You know, if I were to sing an I it's the same note, but the E is brighter and has more cut to it because when you switch to E, your tongue raises, the space inside your mouth becomes a bit smaller, and the sound or the, the placement of the resonance moves forward. And it's the same with the harp. If I switch from A to E, I'll switch back and forth a few times. Okay. So if I put this up on the screen here, you can see not only is it brighter, but it's about twice as loud. <laughs> um... And I'm not using any more effort. I'm not playing any harder. I'm just shaping the tone and making it brighter. Okay. So um, another thing, when, when I was at Spa, um, I was hanging out with, with Jason Ritchie at one point, just playing. Um, <clears throat> and it was when i just uh, come out with the Wilds tuning. In fact, I don't think it was out then. It was just an idea that something I'd been using myself and I was was showing him some of the stuff I'd been doing with it. Um, this kind of 
And he said, oh, it sounds, it kind of sounds like you're amplified. And I, I was just playing acoustically outside. And that, again, it's to do with this, this E vowel, forward bright placement. Um, remember, the volume should come from resonance, not from using lots of force or lots of air. You want to get keep relaxed and feel feel the sound resonate. Let the sound happen rather than make it happen. So with these high notes, like I'm using on on my tune in here, what I found is if I brighten the sound up with this forward placement and this this E vowel shape and then bring in my vibrato this starts to happen So it does kind of sound electric. It sounds amplified because there's all these overtones going on and this brightness to the sound. And that all gets enhanced when you bring in the vibrato as well. Um, so it's just something I thought I'd share with you. Um, like I said, I've, I've heard a lot of harp players discussing tone before, but always going the other way, getting a, a darker kind of... <laughs> That kind of deep, bassy tone, which is really good for certain things. Um, for my music, which is, you know, kind of hard rock these days, that doesn't work because it just doesn't cut through the mix. So give this a try, this brighter sound. Um, it's good to learn the extremes. So getting a really <laughs> bassy further back placement and a really bright forward placement. And you'll probably find that what you want to use most of the time is the middle ground, somewhere in between. So a nice round bottom end, but still some brightness on the top. So let me know in the comments how you get on with this. Hope you found this useful and uh, I'll be back with another video soon. Cheers.